Good afternoon, Mahalakshmi. How are you today? <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm well. That's great. This is Noreen with Mahalakshmi, and she'll, she has the Good Karma Diet. Uh, and today was a wonderful cooking class for the Good Karma Diet at the Shivananda Ashram, Grass Valley. Um, interestingly, you did orange foods today. Tell me about that. So actually, when we go into the, the month end, I like to uh, begin the next month with foods that have a certain color or a certain vibrancy that resonate with the body. And with the orange foods, uh, they can assist in inflammation in the body. So it's not only beautiful to look at in your cooking, it actually is function. It creates a function in the body. That's wonderful. Well, particularly now with the pandemic, um many people are focused on inflammation so anti-inflammatory foods are so so important you made a beautiful winter pumpkin squash and you incorporated ayurvedic concepts um, in the pumpkin squash that you made um, you talked about layering and building flavor mm -hmm. so tell me about the importance of that in cooking mm -hmm. well the six tastes is a is part of the ayurvedic system for creating a balance in the body so in our pumpkin curry, we layered flavors so that each flavor has, is independent, right? It, when it melts, it creates one taste, but all are very important into the finished dish, right? So we learn sometimes in cooking, oh, add a quarter teaspoon of that, add a tablespoon of that, stir it in. But in this particular curry, we add it in segments. So it builds, the so flavor builds, and it creates a rounded curry. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, you use the word masala. Lots of people use that word, as, particularly as it relates to Indian cooking, mm -hmm. but what does that mean, masala? Masala is just an additive or, or a spice that you're going to add to your dish, okay. right? It's going to create, and there's chai tea masalas, there's any type, there's sambor masalas, and that's your family's herb recipe. That's your recipe that you're bringing to your dish. Sure, so sure. So it's, it's as, uh, it's, it's this, as similar, everyone has a different pair of shoes, right? So it has, it, it has a special meaning to who's ever cooking in that family. So they bring their masala, their mixture. Wonderful. So the masala is really a mixture of various spices? Mm -hmm. It can it's be. It's a blend. A blend. Beautiful. Like a curry powder. People think that curry powder is a powder, is a type of herb. But actually it's a blend of herbs. So that in cup it makes a powder and it creates what they say is a curry. Beautiful. Um, blooming spices, you bloom today. You use coriander seeds and also um, dried coconut that mm -hmm. you toasted. And you, you talked about the importance of blooming mm -hmm. spice, certain spices. Um, can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. So not only is it economical because you can use less spice as you make them more fragrant. It releases the oils and the spice and creates a, a fragrancy to it that adds to your dish. So when you place the dish in front, you're not only seeing it with your eyes, you're experiencing it with the senses, right? So it, it, it creates the juices flowing for the body. Beautiful, and it, it, it really releases a, a, a gorgeous aroma. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Beautiful. definitely. Um, ginger, uh, you used ginger in your, um, your pumpkin curry today, mm -hmm. and you talked about the importance of ginger, particularly in the winter time, to digestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always a good idea when the body begins to hibernate, right? So the winter is the, the time that the body resets itself, right? So you can feel the body slowing. You know, we have a year-round lifestyle, but really the body doesn't. So. To, to keep the, the uh, juices flowing, as it were, we add fresh ginger, usually at the, at the uh, time of seeding, right on top of your dish, but you can also add it to the dish. You can add it here and there. Now, ginger is very strong, so you don't, again, want to come out of balance, right? You don't want to taste your ginger because it's going to be a beautiful symphony, right? So in a symphony, you don't necessarily hear the horns or the clarinet, but when they come together, it's the beautiful music. The same with spices. Okay, so a little goes a long way. A little goes a long way. Beautiful. Um, you also made brown rice today, and you talked about the importance of including brown rice um, in your diet in the wintertime, and talked about its grounding effect. 
Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. And also using medium grain brown mm -hmm. rice. Tell me about that. Well, grounding, of course, is, is important during the winter because it's vata season, right? So we tend to be dry and, and cold and, and the body needs to be moisturized from the inside out. But grinding foods, grounding foods, keep the body centered, keep it balanced, right? So we're not, our mind isn't running amok and we're not, you know, we're balancing our mind and our body. So grounding brown rice is very good for that purpose. And it's a grain that's important in the body to, to assimilate. And then, of course, it helps with elimination. Okay. Is there a reason why you um, chose medium grain brown rice? I choose medium grain rice because I'm very comfortable with it. Short grain rice can get a little bit mushy. Yeah. And long grain rice is kind of temperamental. Okay. Right? You have to fluff it afterwards. Sure. So medium grain is the most uh, forgiving brown rice for me. That's a great reason. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, you also did a beautiful roasted vegetable dish and uh, used a variety of vegetables. Tell me about the winter vegetables that you selected for this dish. Thank you. So to complement the curry, we had a little bit of a roasting session. And I like to bring uh, new ideas to, to people because sometimes we can get in ruts in the kitchen. So uh, the winter time is a beautiful time for a fresh turnip. Turnips are lovely. Again, we did the parsnip. Parsnips are a beautiful thing to roast. Roasting uh, butternut squash, roasting whole Brussels sprouts. Those are all items that are very prevalent in the winter time and get, uh, get a little bit overdone with balsamic vinegars and heavier things. When actually, if you just flavor it with a little salt and olive oil, the roasting is beautiful on winter uh, root vegetables. Absolutely. Yeah, and you added some, uh, you know, you, you really elevated the dish because you added some green beans on top, mm -hmm. which I've never seen that done before. Mm -hmm. um, it it so creates you, a nice snap, and actually there's protein in green beans. So, so there's a good way to add a little bit of protein, but it doesn't have to be so heavily and robed in protein. That's so it's beautiful. a good way to keep your uh, diet balanced. Yeah, I like the, the way that you, you put the green beans on top of the vegetables. They, they almost acted as a floor for the vegetables, Correct. For, the green, for the green beans. Correct. Yeah. And you can add in as many as you'd like and just right. drizzle lightly with olive oil. Yeah. And you said at the end, you add dried cranberries for a bitter mm -hmm. taste? For a bitter taste and it kind of is reminiscent of fall and winter. So it's a, a good way to add that little sharpness in a dish. Sometimes it can be a little mundane with the different potatoes and the Okinawa yam, so it's nice to add a little bit of a, a, tongue, uh, a tongue rest, a little bit of a sharpness. Yes, and I know Ayurveda, uh, the bitter taste is very good for digestion, mm -hmm. according to Ayurveda. Is there anything that you can add regarding that? Yeah, I can add that they, would, they don't mix fruits. They're big on combining, things that are combined, sure. but if yeah. you cook, with that. So say if you're you're adding the cranberries in, you want to finish and roast it gently towards the end so that it, it's cooking with your vegetables. So they don't uh, Ayurveda doesn't necessarily combine fruit and vegetables together. Okay, beautiful. Um, you also talked about the importance of black pepper in the winter time and also how it can help with taking herbs as well in terms of assimilating the herbs. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So black pepper quickens the effect. So uh, many times in Ayurveda, you'll, you'll take uh, Ayurveda herbs and it'll be requested that you add them in with your ghee or make a medicated ghee. And just a pinch of pepper will take that and, and kind of uh, like a speaker, puts it on a speaker. It makes the, the herbs a little bit more large, right? And it takes it a little bit deeper into the cells. So pepper is a wonderful thing in the summertime because we can, again, tend to our body can get a little sluggish, and uh, certainly now. And in the winter as well. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. And I know that you're a fan of Himalayan pink salt. Tell me why, or elaborate. I appreciate it because it's not as processed. So salt is an important component in the diet, but as, uh, as people have, have overused it in processed foods, Mm -hmm. Our salinity level has gone through the roof, right? So now we're overdoing our salt. But if we take those rains in and just use a pure mineral salt and use it judiciously into the dishes, then it helps the body as opposed to causing hypertension, which can be a ramification of using processed salt. Yes, that's, that's uh, wonderful because um, uh, we tend to be um, 
salt shy, but it's it's really looking at the quality of the salt, mm -hmm. um, whether you're cooking with the salt or using it at the table, minimizing processed foods. Mm -hmm. So those are, are beautiful points. Mm -hmm. um, tempering and tarka. Mm -hmm. What what does that mean? What do they mean in terms of culinary and, and helping elevate tarka. a dish? Yeah, so that's absolutely a tarka is an important aspect of finishing a dish. So many times we'll drizzle with olive oil or you finish a dish with something. In uh, curries, it's nice to finish it with the mustard seed or cumin or fenugreek. So it, it allows the, uh, again, the blooming process and the aroma to the nose and the flavors infused in the curry. So it's a, a tarka is an important aspect of a lot of uh, Indian dishes and chutneys, you'll see it. So it's again, it's a quick splattering or, or blooming of the spices and I use, uh, predominantly uh, mustard seed, but there's many seeds that they use, fenugreek and uh, coriander seed. Beautiful, and it's added at the end, which it's is very different end. than other uh, cuisines. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Beautiful. Okay, uh, and you finished your uh, curry with a little bit of fresh cilantro. Mm -hmm. um, is it important to have a fresh herb at the end in your I dish? I think or? it's important to wake yeah. up the palate because we have an idea that curries are heavy and and over simmered and spicy and and this is just not true it's just it curries are light and and uh, uh easy on the body but they're grounding but they're light you know they're not heavy and over spiced the spices are, are blended and balanced well in a good curry mm. so i add that freshness at the end because it keeps the mind fresh right you have that crunch you have a freshness sure, sure. and a bit of green as well a bit of always green beautiful and, and coriander is very good for the detoxing yeah. process it's Absolutely. very good for the body well this is so wonderful today thank you so much mahalakshmi you're so welcome thank coming you. today from the shivananda ashram in grass valley thank you thank you